I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. We're out on my porch today because I'm doing some PID tuning of my quad. And I have just gotten done trying to make some videos about PID tuning using plasma tree because I know that one of the challenges of PID tuning is knowing if this then that. If you see your copter doing this, here's the change you need to make to fix it. And that's so hard to do and I have so much hope that plasma tree will become a tool that you can use to get a better sense of what your quad's doing. But I gotta tell you guys, I've been incredibly frustrated with it. I've been incredibly frustrated with, I just can't seem to get meaningful, repeatable, predictable results from it. And here's the freaking thing, guys. Our, the quads fly really good on defaults, most of them. The defaults fly really good. So what I'm going to do is, screw all that stuff, I'm going to tune my way, which is to just make a couple tweaks, put the quad up, fly it, look for bad stuff that's happening, and then just go get on with our life and go fly. Because that's what we want to do, right? We want to fly quads. We, do, we don't want to, nobody, want, nobody wakes up and says, all I want to do is tune, but I'm not interested in flying. Tuning is a way to get to a better flying quad, but... So let's not get bogged down in the minutiae. I, that's what I've been doing. I've been hoping that if I get bogged down in the minutiae of black box and plasma tree, that I'll find a breakthrough into this place where suddenly the quad flies a whole lot better. But even when I try and chase that stuff down, it never really does fly that much better. So let me show you how I tune a quad. Stay tuned. Here's what we got. Betaflight 3.5, total defaults. Look at the configuration. We're on D-Shot 1200, fine. 8K, 8K, this is my flight controller. It's an MPU 6000 gyro. That means it can't do 32K sampling. That's fine, don't freak out, it'll be fine. 8K, 8K, it's going to fly great. Don't worry about it. Um, what else we got? Air mode is on. Have air mode on. That's what I say. Always have it on. It stabilizes your quad when the throttle is low. Anti-gravity gain should be on. I think it's on by default in 3.5. Definitely have that on. Helps stabilize your quad when you are raising and lowering the throttle rapidly. By the way, I think we're going to have to work on that on this quad. Dynamic filter on by default in Betaflight 3.5. Over here in the PID tuning tab, filter settings are at defaults. You used to turn some of the notch filters off, and some people go over here in Betaflight 3.5, and they're just like, oh, I'm going to turn some of these off. No, no, no. The things that you used to turn off are already off by default in 3.4 and 3.5. These, these are extra things. Just leave it alone for now. Here in the PID settings, here are some changes that I always make. Now, some of you guys are going to say, wait a minute, don't, how come you're making these changes? Don't we need to fly the quad? You know how whenever you set up a new quad, you just put your rates on it. Every quad you fly, you put your rates on it, and that's where you're going to start. Sometimes you'll need to tweak the rates a little bit, like a 6-inch quad might not go as fast when you have the same rates. You might need to turn the rates up a little compared to a five inch quad or a micro, you might have less rates. For a race quad, you might have different rates than a freestyle quad, but you don't need to like tune the quad to find out what the rates are gonna start at. You start with your rates and you put them on there. So I put my rates on here, and here are the rates that I use for all my freestyle quads. The other thing I'm gonna change is the feed forward value. This used to be the D-term set point weight. They've changed it to feed forward. It kind of does the same thing, but slightly differently. The gist of it is that feed forward changes the sharpness of the stick feel. And if you don't know what that means, I'm not going to explain it to you. What you need to do is take a quad, fly it with the Betaflight defaults, then set the feed forward to like 200 and go fly it again and feel the difference. You'll feel the difference. Very, It should be very obvious. And you'll go, okay, now I'm going to dial that in somewhere between 60 and 200. I used to fly with a set point weight of 1.0. And the formula that we use is you take your D gain from the older versions of Betaflight 
You divide that by 26 and you multiply by your set point weight. So in 3.4, the D gain was just about 25 or 26. So that's going to make the math easy. A D gain of 26 divided by 26 is 1 times the set point weight of 1.0, which translates to 100, 1000, 1000. That gives us a feed forward of 100. So I'm going to put a feed forward of 100, which should give me approximately equal stick feel to how I used to get on Betaflight 3.4. Um, if none of that made sense to you, here's what I say. If you like a softer, smoother feeling quad, the default of 60 is fine. If you like a little bit sharper quad, I'd set it to 100. If you like a really razor sharp response, try something like 150. And again, there's no... Just fly three packs. Try all three of those settings and see which one you like the best. Okay? All right. I am going to change the feed forward transition. With a feed forward transition of zero, then the feed forward value is the same throughout the whole stick travel. Especially if you run a higher feed forward value for a sharper stick response, you may want a little bit softer stick response when you're making fine, precise movements toward the center of the stick travel. And you may want a sharper stick response when you're making more rapid movements like snap rolls. By raising the feed forward transition a little bit, you can give yourself a little a, a, a center stick area that's softer. And I'm gonna set that to 0.15 or 15%, which means the center 15% of my stick travel, just where I'm making the most fine, precise movements, is gonna have a little bit softer response and then everything past that is gonna be sharper. I'm gonna turn on iTerm Relax. This is one of those things that I think they should have on by default. The iTerm Relax causes there to be less bounce back at the end of flips and rolls, especially if you choose to run very high eye gains for a very locked in and robotic feel to your quad. It'll cause there to be less bounce back on flips and rolls. I'm gonna turn iTerm Relax on. I think it should, I really think it should be on by default. I don't think it has really any downsides. I suggest you turn that on and just leave it on. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to the receiver tab. And I want you to change your smoothing type to filter and change your channels smooth to all, all channels, roll pitch, yaw, and throttle. And that's especially important because if you don't smooth the yaw axis, then you can't have feed forward on the yaw axis. And feed forward is especially useful on axes with not very much authority. So since the yaw axis depends on motor torque and prop drag instead of thrust, it's not very authoritative. Uh, and feed forward can help make up for some of that, meaning, well, that's, that's kind of what feed forward does. It just accelerates the quad when you're moving the stick. So we're gonna make sure that's on. And with that done, we're ready to go fly. And here's what I'm gonna do when I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna look for bad things that the quad is doing that I wanna fix. I don't really, the idea that I'm gonna like try to fine tune the minutiae of the stick feel by, you know, I just, I don't find that it's usually necessary to do that. I find that the quad flies pretty good on the defaults. We set the rates, we set the feed forward value for stick feel. That's pretty much it. Let's see how it flies. Oh, hey, what quad are we doing using here? This is the Chameleon TI frame from Armitan. These are the Rotorite Hype Train Drib motors. HQ 5x4.3 V1S props. I think these are great freestyle props. These motors could handle a heavier prop like a 5x4.5 easily. Just amp draw would go up and we'd lose a little bit of smoothness. So no problem, 5x4.3. Especially on the higher KV Hype Train motors, these lighter props still do okay. The camera is the Cadex. Turbo, Micro, SDR2. I'll show you some DVR footage as well um, so that you can have a look at how that looks. The flight controller is my very own JBF4 V2.0 and it's my ESC as well, the JB4 and 1. Okay, let's do it. Let's see how it handles turns. A little bit of prop wash there. Yeah, definitely a little bumpy. So the prop wash handling needs to be improved. We're getting prop wash oscillation. 
battery sagged out a little there. Oops. It's not the worst, but that's pretty good there. As the battery is sagging, we're uh, we're getting prop wash. We're getting our prop wash handling is getting better as the battery gets lower. Um, how is the nose? How is the nose position hold on throttle punch? Not the greatest. You can see the nose is moving just a little, and as I move the throttle faster, well, as the battery is getting lower, it's getting worse and worse. Yeah, the throttle's not holding rock steady. It's interesting. This is the second quad I've seen on Beta Flight 3. That's done this. Betaflight 3.5 changed the way that anti gravity gain worked. It's a new smooth anti gravity gain. But I wonder if. The way it's coming on is not the best. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so what did we see there that needs to be addressed? We got some prop wash oscillation we're going to want to deal with. We've got a little bit of issue with the nose holding steady. Those are the two main things. And those are probably two of the biggest things that I try to fix. We didn't do any flips and rolls because, well, we just didn't. So let's see what we can do about those things. Um, for the nose hold, the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to go into the pit tuning tab and I'm going to raise anti-gravity gain. Let's try a value from 5 to, let's just try 10. Let's just double it. Let's make a big old change and see what happens. For the prop wash, there's basically two ways to deal with prop wash. One is to change the ratio of P to D. So you can lower P or raise D. Either of those things will improve prop wash handling. But they'll have other effects as well that you may not like. So we could lower P. It'll make the quad fly a little bit softer. But maybe that's okay. Especially now that we have feed forward to help make up for that some. Or we can raise D, but that'll tend to make the motors hotter. The other thing we can do is we can adjust the filtering. Less filtering makes less prop wash, more, more or less. And I think I'm going to go with less filtering, and the reason I'm going to do that is because this flight controller has an MPU 6000 gyro. It's running at 8 kilohertz, and therefore it doesn't have as much, it has more inherent filtering then if we're doing uh, an ICM series gyro at 32 kilohertz. Since, we're, since that's the case, these, these filter defaults are tuned to be okay with 32 kilohertz gyros that are, have more noise. So this is probably more filtering than we need and we can probably afford to lose some of this. As I make these changes, I'm gonna wanna do some test flights and pay attention to if I start getting hot motors, especially if my props are brand new when I'm tuning if I then tune to the ragged edge and I break a prop later, I can suddenly smoke a motor, so I want to be careful with that. I always like to do tuning with not the best, brandest new props, because it means that then when I'm flying on brand new props, the quad will fly great, but if I do get a little bit of a bent prop or a nick prop, I'm not going to suddenly smoke a motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this low pass. I'm going to raise the gyro low pass 1 up to, it's at 100. Let's push it up to maybe 130 hertz. And I, well, I'm doing that and I haven't even looked at the black box logs, have I? I know! This is how I tune though. I'm going to raise it and if I get hot motors, I'm going to put it back down again. I'm going to try something else. What frequency is my motor noise? It's probably around 350, 400 hertz. I don't know. Let's just fly. And let's just tweak and fly. You know, this download and upload and look at the black box. Ah! Been doing that for a day and a half and it's driving me crazy and I'm sick of it. Let's go fly. Let's see. Nose hold, did it get better? A lot more noise in the video. I can definitely see noise in the video. I mean, that's from the change of the filter. See those black lines? That's not great. How about the nose hold? Pretty solid, except when I go, yeah, definitely get more noise in the video. How's the flight? Pretty smooth. Still getting some prop wash though, so 
Let's see how our motors are. I'll bet our motors are... When I see that noise in the video, those black lines, that's not a good sign for me. That's an indication to me that I probably need a little more filtering. I'm not happy with that. So, let's go fix that. are not too hot, but I don't like that we got that visible noise. I don't want that. I could add, I got a great big honking capacitor on here, and we still got that noise, so we're just not going to go that direction. We're going to go a different direction. Filter settings. We raised raise it to 130. It didn't seem good. Let's take it down to 110. We still got this kind of rough snap when the, uh, when the, eye, when the uh, anti-gravity kicks in. It kind of goes, ugh. I'm not sure that's the best. I feel like going much higher is going to give us, uh, give us mm, sudden changes in the stiffness of the quads feel as we're making relatively normal throttle movements. Let's take that down to a little sort of middling value. Let's see if we can find a good happy medium there. And then we're going to raise D. We're going to try and solve that prop wash by raising D. That's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to raise it to, let's say, 25 to 30, 27 to 35. We're just going to bump that up a tiny bit. See if we can get this prop wash cleaned up a little bit. Okay. Not so much the the little black lines and noise. It's okay. The prop wash seems okay. I can hear it the best here. They're pretty warm. Not entirely thrilled about that. So we're having some issues with noise on this quad. These props aren't the newest, but they're not the worst either. They're a little warm, but... Mm, I don't think I'm going to go any further with uh, D-Gate. At this point, this is the point where we could pull out black box and start to look at the noise profile on the different axes. For example, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more noise on the pitch axis. Um, so, because I've, I've dealt with this frame before. So, um, I could try, yeah, I don't know, lowering pitch, P maybe? Yeah. I feel though like this is a reasonably good quad, uh, maybe not perfect. But uh, this is, I would certainly fly it and see how I liked how it was flying. I'm not going to push that low pass anymore. I feel like it made the quad. Let me push the D just a little. Push the D just a little to try and get a little bit better prop wash handling out of it. I have one more pack, and what I'm going to do with this pack is one more pack charge. Yeah, this is the last charge pack I have. I'm going to um, just put this up and fly it, and we'll look at the high def, and we'll see how the quad looks like it's flying.
bad behaviors that might come out in the high depth footage. that point, at that point, hmm, I don't know. I mean, I gotta check the prop wash handling. I bet it's not quite perfect. Oh, how are the motors? Are they super hot? They're, well, they're pretty warm. Well, guys, at this point, I would check the high def and see how the prop wash handling was. The motors are a little warmer than I would really prefer. I might actually end up turning the filtering back down a little bit. Um, let me see how that affects the prop wash handling. We need to fine tune it, but that is my rough. Betaflight 3.5 tune that I kind of just would put on every quad. Mm, the perfect tune. Man, well, that's maybe a video of the day. Thanks for watching. Happy flight. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs>